fail to consult on appointments for officers of Parliament. These watchdogs don't work for Liberals. They work for all of Parliament, yeah, and we represent yeah, all yeah, Canadians. Yeah, yeah. So when will the Prime Minister drop his tired talking points, keep the promise to be open and accountable, and commit right now to follow the right process, the legal process, for these appointments. Yeah. The Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, I thank the member opposite for, uh, for his comments and for contributing to uh, the Supreme Court appointment uh, process. As he mentioned, it was a, is a very good one. Uh, but I do want to correct him on that we did, for example, on the Commissioner of Lobbying and the Commissioner of Official Languages, reach out to uh, the opposition parties uh, back in June to talk about the stakeholders they wanted, the communities they thought we would involve, uh, how they felt the appointments process should go. Uh, we were happy to consult them then. We're happy to be open, transparent and engaging throughout the process. Honourable Member for Carleton. They tried to raise taxes on health and dental, dental benefits, but we stopped them. They tried to raise taxes on people with autism and diabetes, but we stopped them. They're trying to raise taxes on our family farmers and local businesses, and we continue to stop them. Will the Prime Minister admit that he's just putting these tax increases targeted at vulnerable people on hold, and that he'll try to bring them back in if, God forbid, he gets another chance after the next election? Right, Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker. We lowered taxes on the middle class and raised them on the wealthiest 1 per cent, and they tried to stop us. We brought in a Canada Child Benefit that gives more money to 9 out of 10 Canadian families and lifts hundreds of thousands of kids out of poverty, and they tried to stop us. Uh, we moved forward in increasing the guaranteed income supplement for our most vulnerable elderly seniors, and they tried to stop us. And we moved forward on strengthening the CPP for future generations. Generations, they tried to stop us. The Honourable Member for Carleton. Now let's talk about their real record. Despite their promises, the wealthiest one percent in Canada are paying a billion dollars less in taxes. Despite their promises, the middle class, 87 percent of them are paying higher taxes. Despite their promises, that millionaire, the Prime Minister, continues to get child care benefits in the form of taxpayer-funded nanny services. And their wealthiest friends continue to stash away their money in tax havens that this government has done nothing to address. When will they admit that this is a government by the rich, of the rich, and for the rich? Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, once again, in their pursuit of endless partisanship, the Conservatives follow uh, think tanks uh, that do not include the whole picture. The, the stats they're quoting now don't actually include the Canada Child Benefit, and I can understand why, because they campaigned against our Canada Child Benefit, which gave more money to 9 out of 10 Canadian families and lifted hundreds of thousands of kids out of poverty, because they wanted to continue with their benefits that send child benefit checks to millionaire families. I don't think that's fair. Canadians didn't think that's fair, and that's why we're delivering on what we committed to Canadians to do. Honourable Member for Carleton. They do continue to deliver childcare benefits to that millionaire in the form of taxpayer-funded nannies. But beyond that, this, he, he criticizes the source I use for statistics. He says it's a think tank. Actually, it's his own finance department, <laughs> which says that the wealthiest is paying a billion dollars less under this government. No new taxes for his trust fund, no new taxes for Morneau Chappelle, no new taxes for his fundraising chair, just more taxes for the working people who pay this bi the bills in this country. Why? 